Are there any government programs in UAE that are supporting small medium enterprises such as yourself? And then I'll get to the second. Uh, it's not. It's not as straightforward as they're going to come in and uh, you know we don't have a like a social security system or something like that in here that you're presently a part of in partnership with the government, right? So we don't have a system in place for them to come and you know, help you with your operating costs, the staff costs directly by agreeing to pay a portion of the wage or something like that. That, that we don't have. But the, the government has been very, very proactive, not just in the UAE, all across the Middle East, where uh, they've been very proactive in coming up with different measures, uh, the, you know, including, uh, you know, say from a FEC perspective, yes. uh, they've kind of uh, announced uh, a, a kind of a plan where banks are going to defer a lot of their repayments in case, uh, you know, uh, these guys have uh, repayments to do. And those are all being deferred. Uh, there is talk about uh, short to medium term loans being given to them so that they are able to, you know, bite through these difficult times. Um, there are regulations that are coming in place to request, uh, you know, uh, government can only request in this particular stage. So yeah. uh, developers of properties, commercial properties and everything else to give rent moratoriums to a lot of these uh, two people like us or to all commercial establishments for that matter. Got so it. that they're able to buy through these times. They've given some cutbacks in utility bills and everything else. So these are all small little things that are helping. Uh, on the other hand, as uh, Mina Lack, yes. the board, uh, of Mean Alak has also, you know, put together uh, a request to the governments all across right. the MENA region to try and to help us bite through these difficult periods and difficult times and then support us by way of, uh, you know, probably looking at VAT holidays for a period of time so yeah. that we are able to transfer that benefit back to the end user, uh, probably duty-free imports for a period of time so that we are able to encourage the business to buy new stuff and then, you know, take advantage of this duty holiday and then offer something new so that you're able to lure your customers back into, uh, into your operations. Okay. So, uh, but I'm sure there'll be a lot more that'll be announced. There are, there's almost like 14 to 15 different points that mean lack of made as a request to the government so that we're able to support operators as well as suppliers in the leisure and entertainment business in this part of the world. Uh, all of them be uh, granted, maybe, maybe not, uh, but I think many of them will be granted uh, because uh, nobody's to do this. Every, everybody, even the government is feeling the pressure because they're going through increased costs in terms of maintaining, uh, you know, all the sanitization measures, ensuring the, the lack of spread of this or arrest the spread of the virus and everything else. So there are costs all around, right, for everybody. We all need to be understanding of that, that um, the majority of the staff that we employ are expatriates, right? Got it, yeah. So when they, are, when they are expatriates, then we also have to look at those all those expatriate benefits from housing to flights to medical allowances to everything else. So right. uh, th that proves wow. to be a lot more challenging uh, for <laughs> us as a business in the Middle East. So um, uh, what we may get as benefits is probably uh, uh, you know, loans of some kind to support us with cash flow or whatever at this point in time. Yeah. So that is a support a lot of the small and medium sized establishments are going to obtain in the short term. Yeah. Uh, there may be there may be other incentives that we have asked for as MENAL Act right. uh, to the various governments to say that because given the uh, vast amount of expatriate staff that we are employing in here, so maybe a reduction in their uh, residence visa costs, uh, you know, longer terms, uh, some, of these, uh, some of these aspects have been addressed, but we're waiting for a decision from the government. I got you. Okay, excellent. Yeah, the, by the way, the lights just came on. Right. Um, meaning right. It's, it's very clear that um, if you are a Dubai based company, um, you are not exactly employing Emiratis. Everyone that you employ are expats or on some sort of expat package. And so that, That's right. that, that has um, the compensation packages for these employees has a diversity that is far more complicated than other markets. Right. So, um, it's, it's, I, I understand, I get it now. Um, question for you. Many people, just to interrupt you, many people in the Western world 
always yeah. felt that it was so easy to do business in Dubai in terms of operating costs. Yeah. But once they come to know everything that is involved in an expat package because of government rules and labor laws and everything else, then there is, oh my God, it's really significant to operate businesses in Dubai. So It is. There's a, it's a significant overhead and also uh, finding the talent and securing the talent and keeping the talent for as long as you have is, is really, it, it, it's unheard of, especially in markets that have high or large expat pools, if you will.